Hello and welcome to another high intensity workout. I'm Coach Joseph Webb and this workout today is called Morag's Method. You're going to need a Swiss ball and some dumbbells of various weights for this workout because we're going to be working for one minute on with 30 seconds off. I want you to challenge yourself with the weights you use today. The workout should be done under 36 minutes. Round number one, I've given different tempos for the rounds of exercises. So you'll see round one, the tempo is 4-1-1. So that's four seconds lowering the weight, one second pausing, and one second on the way back up. We've got Swiss ball dumbbell alternating chest press. And then that'll be for a minute with 30 seconds recovery. Then we go to Swiss ball dumbbell pullovers and we go round three times before then moving on to round number two. All right, round number two, the tempo is three, one, one. So three seconds lowering, one second pause, one second on the way back up. And we have squat to upright row with dumbbells for a minute, 30 seconds, and then supine hip extension for a minute, 30 seconds. We go round three times. Then moving on to round number three, four, one, one tempo, dumbbell deadlifts and Swiss ball dumbbell check press, which is a shoulder exercise. And then finally, round number four, we've got a one-one-one tempo, so that's quite fast. We've got lateral ball roll, which is an amazing core and lower back exercise, challenges the whole of the body and all the stabilizing muscles. We've got then a Swiss ball rotation exercise, which is for trunk rotation, strength and explosiveness, all right? So that's the routine. Get yourself warmed up before you join me, and I'll see you in the workout. All right, so let's begin this routine. Grab your Swiss ball, take a seat on the Swiss ball. You're gonna be going back like so, laying yourself back in this position. Now we're not starting just yet, I'm just getting you ready for the first exercise. And you're gonna exhale, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, Four. There's a pause at the bottom as well for a second, okay? So that's the first exercise we're going into. I'm gonna press the timer. I want you to get ready to go as soon as you hear this beat, and then I'm gonna join you, all right? So, are you ready? Three, two, one, let's begin. It's really important that you use a weight that challenges you throughout this routine to make it effective. The high intensity element is going to come from proper weight selection. So when you come down, your core has to work extremely hard to keep you balanced on this ball. And that's what makes it so challenging. So remember, it's 4 one, one, one on the way up, four seconds on the way down, one second pause, and then you're up again with the opposite arm. So we get 60 seconds per exercise here with 30 seconds in between. Weight selection, I'll say it one more time, is absolutely key. Okay, very good, so 30 seconds in between. We're now gonna do a dumbbell pullover. So just watch me very quickly. I lay back on the ball, I put the dumbbell up here. You can use the same weight you used on the chest press and I'm gonna draw like a half moon down and then drive up from my back muscles, okay? So visualize underneath the armpit and that's where you're pulling from. So get yourself ready, big deep breaths and let's begin. Again, four seconds on the way down, brief pause and then one second up, driving from underneath those armpits. Big breath in as you go back. <sighs> Exhale as you come up. <sighs> as you breathe in on the way back, pull that belly button in and you feel a lovely stretch. Pull down the front of the body. <sighs> and when we sit at desks all the time, we're leaning forward, which shortens the abdominals, makes the muscles shorter. This Great stretch actually lengthens them again. So it's really good for posture. Deep breath in. 
control. Very good. Good breath in. Okay, good. So now we're gonna to return to the chest press after 30 seconds of rest. So you know how normally when we do a routine, we'll go through all of the exercises and then go back around. Today, we're gonna to focus on two exercises for three rounds to build up the fatigue in those areas. So we'll work in the chest, on the chest press, the triceps in the front of the shoulder, and on the pullover, we're working those lats really, really hard and the core. So off we go for round number two. Let's begin. Control. Control. So the key with the tempo is just avoiding any momentum. Come on. Okay, very good. So that's that one again. 30 seconds recovery. Grab some water if you need it. You know pullovers are coming next. Fifteen seconds. So you're gonna grab one dumbbell. Let's go. Get in the ready position. Wait for the beat. Right, breathe in on the way down. Nice and controlled. Feel that stretch. If you're struggling with balance, then move your feet wide. You want to make the balance tougher? Bring the feet closer. Okay, good. So if you're feeling that going into round number three, you want to up the weight, grab some heavier weights to challenge you a little bit more. Again, if I was doing this workout on my own, I'd probably try and up the weights a little bit. But because I'm trying to communicate with you, <laughs> I always like to keep a little bit left in the tank, okay? But I encourage you at home to really push yourself. So you need the 30 seconds recovery. All right, we're ready for the final round. Let's begin. Alternate and press. We'll kick us off. Then pull overs. And then we're on to a new exercise group. Explosive. Control. It doesn't matter if you don't get the four seconds perfect. The key is that you're thinking about it. Which will stop you rushing the reps and using momentum. Way, you'll notice that this round the muscles really start to kick off and what I mean by that is they burn that lactic acid is building up good Woo. all right next we have the pullover for the final time, in through the nose, expand the tummy when you breathe, out through the mouth. We call that diaphragmatic breathing. All right, get ready. 
We lay back. All right, last one of these, yeah? Ready? And let's go. So now you're in your third round. I really want you to focus your mind underneath the armpits because that's where you should be pulling from. A lot of people pull from the back of the arm and try and lock out the elbow on this one. You want to keep a bend in the elbow, draw like a semicircle or a half moon down and then draw from underneath the armpits. So you feel the stretch underneath the armpit, which is the big lat muscles, the back muscles, and then you pull from that area. Make those muscles work. Some of you may feel the burn in the lower, uh, sorry, the lower back, <laughs> the backs of the arms. And that's normal, they are involved, but we want to try and focus on driving from the lats in the upper back. Very good, okay. Nicely done, so 30 seconds. Next, we have a squat, tart right row. So the weights are by the sides. We sit back into kind of a half squat, and we come up with the elbows coming out to the sides, all right? So you'll need a lot lighter on this one. Don't go too heavy, actually I'm gonna go a little bit lighter just to make sure I can get my form right. Feet about hip width. Okay, shoulders back. You're gonna do like a half squat. You can see my posture from the side, I leave with the hips, I come low, and then come up with the elbows and back down to the start position. So again, nice and slow on the way down, three seconds or so, and then up, okay? Nice and low on the way down, breathe, hold, and up, all right? So again on the way down. So we're working the legs, and here, the shoulders. out through purse lips because remember that keeps the core tight okay supine hip extension laying on the floor popping both your feet up on a swiss ball now we keep this bend in the knee and you're going to drive through your heels and buck your hips and squeeze your glutes this works the whole of the back of the leg okay so Get ready. You're gonna drive through the heels and drive through the hamstrings and the glutes. So we go up, engage, okay? One, two, three. Up, engage. One, two, three. When we hold at the top, one, two, three. Really driving through the heels and the glutes. One, two, three. The whole of the back of the leg is being worked here. Breathe in on the way down, up, engage, really engage. Focus your mind in that area. So the squat, we're working mostly the quad on the squat that we're doing with the upright row. So quads and shoulders, quads is the front of the leg. Here, we're able to get the whole of the back of the leg involved with some extra stabilization work because we're trying to balance on a Swiss ball, right? So, amazing exercise for the back of the body. Right, so 30 seconds, then we go back to the squat to upright row. Now, the glutes are involved in a squat, but only if we get the hips going lower than the knee line. And because we're not doing that on this Squat to upright row, it's mostly going to be your quads. So get ready and let's begin round number two. Make sure the elbow's coming up to the sides. If you've got a mirror, it's a lot easier to see that you're doing this one right. So I'd recommend it if you can. I'm just trying to focus on the feel. If you don't have a mirror, try to imagine your elbow's coming up. 
out to the sides in line with your shoulders. And again, if you're doing any of these exercises with weights and you're saying, I'm not really feeling this, you need a heavier weight, okay? Caveat to that is you must be able to control the weight with good form. So we need a balance between a weight that challenges you but a weight you can control. Good. Time, very nice. Okay, so 30 seconds. You've got time for a quick drink if you need it. But otherwise, down to the mat for the supine hip extension. This is a great exercise. You've really got to make sure that your heels are on top of the ball, dead center almost, yeah? Bent knee, as you can see mine, just off of a right angle is perfect. Not quite a right angle here, about here, yeah? All right, get ready. And buck up and squeeze. One, two, three, breathe in. Exhale, buck and squeeze for a second. One, two, three. All right, you get the pitch, let's go. Muscles. Make them work. Engage those hamstrings and glutes. Really feel it. So you need to develop something through training called the mind to muscle connection. And that is essentially where you're asking the muscles to work. You're really focusing your mind in the area we're working. And you develop that with practice and focus. All right, so now we're going in to begin round number three, all right? It's a lovely workout, plenty of recovery, I like this. And like I said, if your weight selection is good, then your heart rate will be high. Nice. Okay. Ready for supine hip extension for the final time. Now, I can really feel this one in my hamstrings, my calves. So if you can't, it's this mind muscle connection again. Don't worry, just keep practicing, try and focus, and really just try and put your energy into here as you drive up, okay? It will come with practice, I promise. All right, here we go. Engage. Also, everyone has different leg length, so you can play around with bringing the ball slightly closer, slightly further away, and just see if you can get a little bit more tension in your hamstring, that's what you're looking for. So you might find actually that you prefer a slightly different position to me in terms of the knees are closer to you or further away. Play with it. Oh, 
Oh, I can really feel it now. Control on the way down. Woo, that's a beauty. All right. Next, we have dumbbell deadlift, which is very similar to what we just did, really, where we were going down. We were just sticking the bum out a lot more and going a tad lower, and we're standing, okay? So we go in and up, like that. And then we have Swiss ball dumbbell check press, which I'll show you when we get there. So with the deadlift, you should be able to lift quite heavy. The feet are now in the exact same position they were, except this time we're going back with the hips and forward with the torso, nice and slow, and up, okay? So we're going back to 411. Big pause, and up. You are able to go very heavy on this one. Breathe out through purse lips on the way down. Breathe in, hold your breath at the bottom. That's it. Looking straight ahead. You can never underestimate what a difference controlling the weight makes to the intensity. And the shoulders back. Very nice. Okay, sorry. Oh, forgot for a split second what we were doing there. So this one, you likely wouldn't have done before. Feet nice and wide, make sure the heels aren't touching the Swiss ball. You sit nice and upright, okay? With the elbows out in front, and you can follow me on this one, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push up to halfway. Just waiting for that beat. We're gonna push up to halfway, then we're gonna open, we're gonna press, we're gonna close, we're gonna come back down, okay? So come with me, press to halfway, Open the book, right back, press, close the book, and come back down. So we go up, back, press, close, and slowly back down. Keep your belly button tight. It's known as a check press. Watch the whole of the shoulder. We go up through the front, working the sides. And then the whole shoulders we press. Up. Exhale, close. Breathe in. Slowly down. Feel that burn. Up to halfway. Open. Press. And down. With control. Okay, good job. So that was the check press. Now we go back to the deadlift. So you'll likely at home need to change weights on that. The weight you use for the dumbbell press is gonna be significantly lighter than what you use for the deadlift, because on the deadlift, you're using your whole body as a unit, and it's very strong when it's used as a unit, all right? So heavy weights here on the deadlift. Nice narrow footing. Rotate the hips back, go down, keeping the chest up nice and slow, and explode up. Keep it on the way down, bring the belly button in. Stick that bum out. Make sure knees aren't coming over the toes. Through the nose, putting the belly button in, pause. Take that bum out, lean forward through the torso, but you've got to keep the chest elevated. One more. Very good. Okay, check press, grab a quick drink if you can, or if you need to. Next, remember keeping the chest up and making sure that we're not locking in to the Swiss ball because you're leveraging balance. And we don't want that, we want our core to work. 
Make sure that you're nice and upright, long spine, okay? Bring the weights to here and wait for the beat. Let's begin. So we go up, open the book. Exhale as we press. Close the book. Nice and slow on the way down. Open the book. Press. Control. You may have to go lighter as the sets go on. But that's okay. Form is key. Equally, if your form's good and you want more weight, put it up. We're here to work. Open, press, and down. Shoulders back, yeah? Chest up. So the good, great thing about doing the shoulder press through the Swiss ball is that you can't leverage through your feet like you could if you were standing. So everything has to come from your core and your core has to work that much harder to get the job done. Which is never a bad thing, right? Strong core, essential to protect your spine. Right, feet nice and narrow. Protect the hips back. Last time on the deadlift, four seconds on the way down. Pause at the bottom. Make sure you're lifting heavy on this. I'm pushing back my hips, I'm leaning forward my torso, but I'm not slouching my chest, okay? Shoulders back and chest up at all times. That's when I say leaning forward. It's like leaning forward from the belly button as your bum goes back. Very nice, okay. Check press. Remember, take a seat, nice long spine. Get yourself in the ready position. We've got 13 seconds, so perhaps just focus on your breathing. In through the nose, expand the diaphragm. Exhale, get the oxygen in. Okay, ready? The last one of these, then we move on to the core. off this gets do not allow your back to slouch okay keep your core strong because ultimately that's what's supporting you in this position it's supporting your rib cage and keeping you in the right position so that you can push this weight up so if you think about your pushing through your core here and your shoulders are helping support the movement through your shoulders sorry your core is helping support the movement through your shoulders. Now, final thing in terms of rounds is core, lateral, ball roll. You're gonna to need to lay on your back on the ball, okay? Feet really wide, palms out to the sides. You're gonna move along with your feet and your shoulders trying to stay in a line until you get to the tipping point Let's go where you feel like you could fall. And then when you get there, you slowly move away from it and go to the other side. So get to that tipping point and come back. Now you should feel that your core is having to work very hard 
to stop you from falling off. So this is a stabilizing exercise to build an extremely strong torso. This is functional core conditioning, but also there's not a single muscle in the body that's not working right now to stop you from falling off that Swiss ball. Breathe in as you transition and exhale as you bring your balance back. Keep your hips up high at all times. Don't let them sag down. Otherwise you'll put unnecessary torsion through your back. Until, just be careful with it. Don't go too far if you don't feel confident, okay? Now that's not supposed to be like a sit-up where you feel burning. You should just feel tension. And the whole body is working really hard there. Now we've got Swiss ball rotations. Very simply, feet nice and wide. Belly button pulled tight. You can also do this with a medicine ball if you want to go heavier, okay, or, or something. Maybe a dumbbell, but I prefer you to use a medicine ball. It's just more dynamic. But you're going to hold medicine ball or Swiss ball here. Keep your belly button pulled in and exhale as you rotate. So this one, again, dynamic core strength. I want you to focus on feeling your trunk working on this one. So I know that after the first three rounds, you're gonna be thinking, well, my heart rate's coming down now. That's totally fine. This part of the workout is all about getting the core strong. When we're saving that till last, okay, we can focus on the core. It's an area that gets neglected, especially rotational movements, which are essential in life. You know, I've said it before in other videos, when you're running around with kids in the garden or you're playing a sport, you're gonna to have to rotate at speed. So if your muscles, your nervous system and your muscles aren't conditioned to be able to move quickly through rotation and the muscles can't stabilize, then you put yourself at risk of rotating, the muscles not contracting efficiently or fast enough and putting pressure into that lumbar spine or those discs, which of course we don't want. So lateral ball raise and the Swiss ball rotation will build up the stabilizer strength of your core. But it's not like a sit up, it's not gonna be the same burn. So don't be looking for that. Head supported, mass of your back on the middle of the Swiss ball, arms out, and you're just looking to move over to feel that tipping point. Now I'm a bit pressed for space here, so I probably could go a tad further, but that's okay. At home, if you have a bit more room, you can move over a bit more, but try your best to keep the shoulder in line with the knee on the outside there, which again is a lot easier with a mirror. Keep your hips high and just feel the core having to engage and just think to yourself, okay, you know, this is going to get my core strong through movement and it's going to stop me getting injured if I go for a run or if I play sports or whatever. It's going to help you. And you've got to remember anyway, that to show off a toned midsection, yes, you need to train your abdominal area, which we're doing now, but the key to that is reducing body fat levels. So never forget that. You know, if you want to reveal the toned midsection, then the key is to bring body fat levels down. All right, not to do more sit-ups. Right, so we're on to the rotation, which I'm actually going to do with a a little medicine ball that I've got here, a little four kilo one, just to add a bit more resistance. Okay, so feet nice and wide. And again, think of this as dynamic. Try to focus your mind in the trunk as you rotate. All right, if you're doing it with a medicine ball, slightly bent at the elbow, and rotate. Now, if you can see my feet, you'll see that I'm pivoting onto the toes. Again, much more dynamic to pivot through the foot and much more natural to anything you do outside. The body moves as a unit. So this is a dynamic movement and the strength that you gain from it is gonna be transferable to everyday life. And that's what I love about functional training, Swiss ball training. Since I started doing Swiss ball training a year ago, year and a half ago, I noticed a massive difference in my strength and my overall fitness outside of the gym. So 
exhale as you make those turns, just short breaths. You'll notice the tempo is one, one, one on this one. So really quick through, very good. Okay, back to the lateral ball roll next for the third and final time. What I like about the design of this one is these three rounds are gonna really challenge you. If you've used the right weight, your heart rate's gonna be right up there. And this is quite a nice way to finish. It's challenging, but it's not leaving you totally out of breath, right? And I quite like that to finish off a workout. Arms out to the sides, hips up high, yeah, feet wide. And let's just tip one way and exhale as you start to move off. Inhale. You're trying to keep your head on the ball at all times and keep your hips up high, okay? And again, I could go much further. And if you've got the strength to, then I encourage you to do the same, all right? It's just a space issue here. You'll feel the point. And if you go too far, you'll also know because you'll be on the floor. <laughs> okay, good. Nice and controlled, take your time. No need to rush this one. If you want to make it even harder, try and pause in the tipping point, right where you could go over the edge and then slowly come out of it. That will make it even harder. Okay, good, all done. All right, so I'm gonna do the final set of the Swiss ball rotation with the med ball again, because I felt that a bit more you could also pick up a dumbbell, like I said earlier, and okay, but just keep it nice and dynamic and focus your energy here rather than through the arms and driving with the arms. All right, seven seconds till we go. 30 seconds to finish the job. Sorry, a minute to finish the job. And then uh, you guys are done. I'm following the ball with my head as well. Remember, purse lips. So pushing through the lips, which will tighten up the core. And this exercise would be a great one for golfers because they have to explode through the swing, but they've often got one side rotationally that's stronger than the other. So this is a good time to work on both. Time, okay. Great job. Let me just stop this timer. So amazing session, well done. I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope you can see the benefit of a routine like this, but it really depends on weight selection. I know you're probably like, Joe, you've said it a million times. I say it because as a coach, that's what I want to drill into my clients and the people that watch these videos. Choose a proper weight that challenges you where you can execute with proper form. And then a workout like this will really push you. So we've covered the whole body there, which is fantastic. We've got so much stabilization through the trunk, through a lot of those exercises, the chest press, the pullovers, the upright row, the hip extension especially, then we've got the check press, and then finally finishing off with that core, we've got the lateral ball roll and the Swiss ball rotation. So whole body covered, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next video.